My name is Elisa Insua. I am a visual artist from Buenos Aires, but I'm currently living in Madrid, in Spain. I started as more as a hobby, uh, something that, that I needed to do and that I liked to do, and I did it for myself. But then I started showing it to people and uh, professionalizing a bit more and exhibiting and getting commissions, and it started like growing. Um, and then in 2013, I became a full-time artist. I've been working for the last 10 years with mostly with discarded material, uh, with things that people don't need anymore, mostly donations. And since I studied economics and business, I didn't study art formally. So all the concepts and all the ideas and all the themes that I work with come from uh, economic science. I did a series of works that are about board games and how they reflect the economic system that we live in. So Monopoly is one of them. Uh, it's a Monopoly board made with uh, metallic objects, consumer objects that are discarded. Behind your artwork, there is, let's say, a message. Yeah. Uh, what is that? <laughs> well, I'm not working like specifically with one single message. Basically, like, or generally, what I speak about is uh, consumerism and what we are surrounding ourselves, ourselves with. How much of that is necessary and how much is not. And also it's a reflection about the economic system in which we live in and how it could be better. So this exhibition I'm going to do now in Spain, it's about a proposal. It's not, it's not a critique to the actual capitalistic system, but a proposal of how we could replace the system with something better or more uh, human. So it's about gift economy, which is a, 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 like an altruistic, utopic eco economy, which is interesting to think about. But does it affect the way you market and sell your work? It does. Like when talking about consumerism, I'm talking. I, I'm using a very um, commercial aesthetic maybe because I use a lot of colors, I use big uh, formats, I, I use uh, shine and glitter and things that catch the eye. So I'm also say, like catching people's attention and, and making them reflect like why am I, I attracted to this? Like why do big colors and bold things and the appearance of something new and cool um, make me want to own it? The things that, the, what, what I preach is that we should think a bit more about what we buy and what impact that has on the rest of the world. And you work with galleries? Uh... I, I work very openly. I, I work with galleries, but not exclusively, so I don't have exclusivity with any gallery. I like to work and collaborate with different galleries with different projects according to what we want to do and what's appropriate. But I like to remain open and I also sell on my own so people can contact me and buy work and the price is always going to be the same. If they go to the gallery, if they buy it in a fair, if they buy it in my studio. So there is no conflict uh, for me to work with different galleries or, or independently. And you mentioned that you also sell your work uh, directly to your clients. Well, I have currently 40,000 followers on my Instagram and then another 10,000 on my Facebook. And they started um, following me because I was very active in my social media. So I was always sharing uh, the creative projects, what I was doing, the finished works, the materials, my ideas, my sketches, everything that I did, I shared with, uh, with the people because I, that, I, think, I think that's very uh, nice to share. And then the followers started flowing in and then there was like a breakthrough when you know how Instagram has an Instagram account. So the Instagram Instagram started following me and mentioned me and uploaded a picture of my work. And that's how I got a lot of followers. And it's very, very nice because at first my follower base was mostly in Argentina and Latin America. And that uh, Instagram post uh, made me reach a lot of new places and that was very important for me. So maybe I get a, someone from Russia who wants to buy work or from Australia or from whatever and that opens up a lot and I think social media is such a good tool. It, it also has its downsides because it's so instant that the work cannot be analyzed in, in a very good way because people look at Instagram posts in like one second and they evaluate in their mind like it or not like it and, and swipe up. So that's like 
a bit complicated, but I think it's overall a very positive tool. I see. Uh, do you have a platform to sell your work online? Do you use? I've never sold online. I'm a bit old fashioned in that. I think uh, it's nice for people to see the work live before buying it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be um, against trying uh, online sales. I just haven't done it because I haven't had the time or I haven't put my energy there, but I'm not, I'm not for or against it. I just haven't tried it yet. Well, when, when I choose a gallery to work with, I, I consider many, many things. Basically, the space uh, is very important, like physical space, and then um, who, who are the people behind it? What, what do they like? What do they think? How do they also like the personal part? Like how do they relate to my work and how do they like if we have chemistry or not, which I think is very important. Uh, they also have to like my work because I need people who, the, the gallery to really support what I'm doing and believe in what I'm doing. I think that's very important. I, know, I, I really like to work with young people also because I think they have a lot of uh, energy, which I think is, is very good and very needed in the art world because in the art world, if you're cross, uh, arm, arms crossed like this, waiting for things to happen, nothing's gonna happen. You have to like be pushing all the time. It requires a lot of energy, so I think that's very necessary. And you do mention that you are, in a way, against consumerism, capitalism, the fast fashion, and all of that. Yeah. Do you still think that selling merchandising, for example, your work printed on a on a coquin, you know, on a pillowcase or yeah. on, a, on a mug? Yeah. Uh, are you for it or against it or never thought about it because the fact that it is a way of consumerism that you also against? Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not against completely consumer society. I'm against uh, consumerism, not consumption. So over consumption is what I'm against, and the thought, the the the, the nowadays thought that having things will make you happy. That's what I'm against. I'm not against having things. I'm against. Uh, what, what people think having, having things will make them uh, feel. And imagine you have three options in front of you. You have 1,000 euro you can invest. You have option A. A gallerist in Paris told you that she would like to meet you with your work and you have to package your work, get him an explanation yes. with a hotel and, and uh, you, know, you have to pay for your trip. That means it's cost $1,000. And second option is the next ARCO is coming up. You uh, have an opportunity to share a corner of the booth of, from a gallery that you already know. Yeah. So that for sure you can have your space, like a small, small, tiny corner with your name. It's like a mini solo show in a way during the one week of ARCO. Yeah. Or the third option is to say 3D sculpture or recycled sculpture, you choose a keyword that describes your work best. And with this 1000, you are able to get top ranked on Google search. Your choice. I Which think I would choose the Arco because uh, the people who see it are into art and it's, uh, I think, a good place to show your work. I wouldn't put it into communication because, to be completely honest, I. I know some artists do it and pay for their communication. I don't like the best known artist to be the one who paid the most. I like to, the best known artist to be the one who has the best work. When artists pay for their communication, I think they're messing something up. I don't, I, I wouldn't do that. Because I think it's unfair, to be honest. That's why I very, got very angry when Instagram, at first Instagram was a platform in, in which you couldn't pay. You couldn't pay for sponsor your posts or pay for followers or pay for, for anything. And I thought that was more fair because the actual followers that people had reflected um, how well known they were, they, they were or how, how many people liked them and not um, how, many, how much money they put in them. And, and between Arco and going to Paris, I think Arco is a, uh, an actual chance to show your work, whereas Paris, we would, we would never know. We would put in some money to see some gallery and we would never know if we would exhibit with, with that gallery or not. So I, I don't think I would choose that option. And you mentioned a good artist should get the attention. How would you define good and quality and good artist, good artwork? How do you define it? Well, that's the hardest question, I think, in the whole art world nowadays, is to say 
what's good art, what's bad art, or what's not uh, anything in the middle, and who decides what it is. Is it the public? Is it the critics? Is it the gallery? Is it the market? I, I think there's definitely not one choice. There's only what I think is good art and what you think is good art and what, what the curator is good art. And it's also drenched in people's um, uh, subjectivity. So it's uh, what I like, what I don't like is, is um, very personal. So it's very hard to say what's good and what's not. But I think there's many variables. There's ideas, there's novelty, there's... Um, the quality of the, the building, how thought it was, um, uh, the composition, the colors, the aesthetic. There's many aspects to evaluate if it's good or if it's, got, if it's bad. And then there's popular, there's unpopular, there's conceptual, there's um, I don't know, so many things to take into, into consideration. In fact, when you invest in your communication, it does not necessarily mean you are spending money on SEM, search engine marketing. For example, you need a new website done. Yeah. And once the new website is done properly, in fact, you could get, get so much more, let's say, exposure on the internet yeah. with the indexing of the search engine, mm -hmm. and you're not spending and buying fake followers. It's just a way to improve overall quality of your presentation. Would you want to know more about marketing and maybe invest some money and time to learn about marketing? Yes, I would be willing to learn a bit more about how to communicate my, my work better. That's, that, that could be good. And what do you think is your biggest bottleneck for your, for your art right now? Well, I think I have many bottle, bottlenecks because my work, I work many, many hours a day and I'm very, very focused on my work. Like it's the only thing or one of the few things that matter for me. Like I'm, I have all my energy put there. Um, but still, my, I've been working like this for 10, for 10 years now with this technique of working with materials and choosing them and sticking them and using the right, um, the right glue or the right... And that takes a lot of time, so I can produce at most 20 pieces a year. Maybe I should have someone to help me uh, in the studio. I thought of that a lot of, a lot of times and I've also hired assistants but I'm not very good at uh, delegating things. Like I'm very, um, how do you say this? Like um, I'm a control freak. So I need to be in every, every detail of my work. <laughs> um, so it's very hard to uh, uh, open up the production. So now I'm thinking of working differently. I'm starting, I've started doing a series of drawing. I've started painting. I've started trying to to open up the game to different uh, types of work. Uh, I'm also going to start um, a series of photography now in September and then I'm going to start a project with vitro, with like um, uh, stained glass. So I have a lot of ideas to open up the game a bit and not be like stuck in this technique that I love and that has been really interesting for me for the last 10 years, but maybe it's time to evolve. So that's in the search I'm in right now. Why you wanted from the when you were young? Why you wanted to choose this career as an artist? I wanted to be an artist because it's the most unpredictable career that you could choose. Like I studied economics and business, and I knew that the if I followed uh, uh, any business career in a multinational or whatever, I knew what the out outcome would probably be, uh, where I would be in fifty years or twenty years or whatever. Uh, it was like a more visible path and that to me sounded a bit boring and also I didn't want to be replaceable or I didn't want to be just some like um, tool in a big machinery that can be replaced easily and it could be anyone, it could be me, it could be my neighbor, it could be my great great grandfather. It's the same because you're just performing for someone else. I think what's interesting uh, the, the interesting thing about being an artist is that you can self-direct your work and dedicate your time to creating something new and in, investigating themes that are interesting to you and be able to share it with your community. Uh, I thought that was more interesting for me, more attractive.